Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I'm an instructor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. We're continuing on in our lecture series on linear equations by introducing the next most important topic in linears. In fact, this topic dominates most of advanced mathematics and engineering. Uh, this is all going to focus on systems of equations. This lecture specifically and this group of lectures will be will be a focus on uh, an introduction just to what a system of equations is um, and we're going to take this from an approach of just graphing so what is what does the a graph of a system a system of equations mean and what does it represent and what can we do with it in this lecture this part part a to focus on just discovering what a system of equations really truly is and then the next video lecture part B will identify these things called consistent systems uh, inconsistent systems and then dependent systems as well although I don't have it written there uh, finally the part C of this lecture we're going to use uh, systems specifically graphs of systems to solve applications so we'll go ahead and start with a definition of what a system of equations is and I have an example down below but it's important that you follow along with the definition first before reading that example. A system of equations is essentially just a group of two or more equations that help define a single situation. Now that sounds kind of odd and, and actually let me just give you a couple examples maybe as an aside first and show you kind of the structure of a group of uh, systems of equations. So an example of a systems of equation might be uh, like a 3x plus y is equal to 10 and an x minus 2y is equal to 3. There's two different conditions here. I need 3x plus y to equal 10, so that's like our first condition. And then I also need, at the same time, I need x minus 2y to equal 3. That's my second condition. So we have these conditions on x and y in this situation that must be satisfied. And so we designate <clears throat> that this is a system by putting a brace right next to it. This is basically us saying these two equations belong together. They are describing a single situation. Uh, another simple example would be um, something like I have three variables. Um, an x, y, and a z, and I think that 3x squared minus z must equal 5y plus 1. That's one condition. That's one condition that relates these three variables. And then you might have another condition, like y has to be x squared. And you might also have uh, a few other conditions, but let's just pretend that these are the conditions that we have given to us. Okay? So this is also considered a system of equations. Notice that the powers on the variables don't need to be 1. It's a, systems, a system of equations no matter what. In this lecture series we're going to focus on a very special kind of system of equations, those that involve linear equations, these ones with single variable or single powers on the variables. So we'll focus on that because it goes along really nicely with the fact that we've been focusing on linear equations. So I did have a little written example down here because the definition is sort of uh, ambiguous, well not ambiguous, just a little difficult to understand. A group of two or more equations that help define a single situation. As a simple example, you pretend as though you have a couple wage earners in your household. The total incomes must be, let's just pretend, 85000 so if I were to write that, if I were to write that out, I would say that the income from person X plus the income from person Y has to be eighty-five thousand. Let's just pretend. Now, in real life, we usually say something like it has to be at least eighty-five thousand, but for now, let's just say it has to has to be exactly. However, one of these people wants to work twice as much as the other person. So let's say that the person X wants their the amount of work that they do to be twice the amount of the work that the person Y does. So if person Y works four hours uh, or earns five thousand uh, dollars, person X will earn ten thousand, that type of thing. And so here you have a system of equations. These two 
conditions define the single situation. Okay? Now, I don't expect at this point for you to be able to build something like this quickly, um, but that's not the point of this lecture anyway. I just wanted to maybe make the definition a little bit easier to understand. So now let's actually graph a system to get a little better understanding of what's going on. And when you graph a system of equations, you essentially just graph each equation separately. And at this point, we're pretty much uh, solid on, on doing this type of thing. The first equation that we have in this example is given to us in slope-intercept form. So I see the y-intercept occurs at a value of 1, so I'll just plot that here. And then we have a slope of 2, which means we rise 2, 1, 2, and run 1. Okay. And then you can link those points up. And try to be exact when you're doing these. If you're graphing these by hand, um, you, you have to be fairly exact to be able to solve a system of equations visually. Usually we do not solve systems of equations uh, just using visuals because it's very, very difficult. But we're just going to go ahead and try here. I'm just labeling my points, by the way. It's 1, 3, and that's 0, 1. Now the second equation here, uh, I see that it's not given in slope-intercept form. I could put it in slope-intercept form if I want, but instead I'm just going to find the intercept. So I'm going to graph this using the intercept method. So if I let x equal 0, in other words, make that y disappear, you'll see that y... Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, if you let x equal 0, that means let x disappear, and that implies that y is equal to a negative 4. If you let y equal 0, so that it disappears, just imagine that y disappears now, x is equal to positive 4. All right, so we're going to plot those points. I'll go ahead and use a different color for that. Uh, in fact, I'll use purple for that. So I'll plot 0, comma, negative 4, which is way down here and 4 comma 0 which is way over here and when you connect these points up a couple things will happen you'll see if you graph this out and if you graph it out nicely which is very difficult to do um, but you'll see that those two lines will eventually cross and in fact let me go ahead and extend out this other line here we might see where they cross. Looks like they cross right about in this area down here. And that's what's interesting about a system of equations is that usually, almost always, a system of equations, when you graph it, will have a point of intersection. So let me label that, that point of intersection, uh, I'll label green here. This point, actually I'm off the screen. That point of intersection is extremely important because we call that the solution of the system. And so I wrote up a little definition here. The solution of a system of equations is defined to be the point of intersection. And when you have a couple lines, like we've graphed here, well, they can only intersect once because they're lines. I mean, there's only one way for two lines to hit each other. So <clears throat> lines usually, or not usually, always, systems of equations where you have two equations with two lines, uh, they will only meet once at most. Um, well, th that's not true. There's there's actually a situation where they can meet infinitely many times, but, but we'll talk about that in the next video lecture. But at least for now, we can just kind of visualize the fact that two lines will just hit at one point, and that one point is called the the solution. To the system. And if I were to estimate the solution to this system visually, uh, I would probably say that that is what, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, maybe a negative 7.5. So the solution here, uh, maybe I'll write this in green. I'm going to say the solution is probably approximately equal to a negative 7.5 comma, that's the x value where these meet, and the y value, well, let's see, it's down 10 here, it looks about down 11, maybe. 
That's not to say that that's the actual solution because all we're doing is eyeballing this. And that's a problem. When you're trying to solve a system of equations uh, graphically, just by graphing by hand, it usually leads to disaster. You usually cannot get a good solution this way. However, we can always try to do this algebraically and, and we'll learn how to, how to do that in the future. Now often people ask little sub questions like um, is uh, 4 comma negative 1 a solution to the system? In fact, let me write that above here. It's getting kind of crowded on this page, but I'll just write it up here and say is 4 comma negative 1 a solution to the system? Well, if you go over 4 and down 1, you land right here. And while you are on one of the lines, you're not on an intersection of the lines. In other words, that point right there does not exist on both lines at the same time. So the answer to that is no. It only solves one of the equations, not, not both. And that brings up a good point. Uh, so I wrote down a little theorem here. The solution to a system is the point which satisfies, which satisfies both equations simultaneously. In other words, at the same time. So if you look back at that previous example, this green dot right there does not satisfy both equations at the same time. It only satisfies this one equation, the purple line, or in other words, this this equation right here. It only satisfies that one equation. However, this point of intersection down here satisfies not only the purple equation, because it sits on that, but it also sits on the red line. So it satisfies both equations simultaneously. Now as a single fast example at the end here, I'm just going to go ahead and do one last little one here. Solve this system by graphing. We'll go ahead and write down what the intercepts are here. When I let x equals 0, y is going to be a negative 5. And when y equals 0, again cover up y, x will be 5. So let me go ahead and graph that equation in red here. So 0 comma negative 5 is down here and 5 comma 0 is right there. And now the other equation here, uh, and I chose very simple equations just to illustrate something. When x is 0, so you disappear, you make x, this x term disappear, y will be 1 actually when you divide both sides by 3. And when y is 0, so make this term with the y disappear, x will be 1. A very nice little equation. I'll draw that in purple. So 0 comma 1, 1 comma 0. There we go, very nice. Okay, and the solution is where they meet, which is this meeting point right there. And you kind of see that's x equals 1, 2, 3, comma, y equals negative 1, negative 2. There we are, 3, comma, negative 2. There is a way that you could check to see if this is truly a solution to the system. You could plug this point back into both of these equations. So plug this in, and um, well, maybe I should write in to both equations. And if it is true that it's a solution to the system, it will actually solve both equations. So equation number one here, we're going to plug in 3 for x minus, and we'll plug in a negative 2 for y. When you do that, let's see, 3 minus a negative 2 is a positive 5, and you see in that first equation we want it to be a positive 5, so that checks out. In the second equation, we had 3 times x, we're plugging in 3, plus 2, uh, plus, not 2 times, sorry, plus 3 times, and then for y, we're plugging in negative 2. Do that math, that's 9 minus 6, or in other words, 3. If you look up here at the equation, the second equation here, we want the right-hand side to turn into 3. So that works out. This means that it truly is the true solution to the system of equations. Just to bring it 
back really quickly. Remember when I ask, asked you if 4, negative 1 was a solution to this system? You could have checked this algebraically. You could have plugged in 4 for x and negative 1 for y into both of these equations. So let's see, if I would have plugged it into the second equation down here, 4 for x minus a negative 1 for y, you would have gotten, uh, let's see, oh, that's because the entire time, man, I have a hard time reading sometimes. That's 3 comma negative 1. It doesn't even sit on that equation. People were probably the entire time thinking, what is he talking about? I apologize. I could edit the video, but I'm too lazy. So there we go. Um, that point was supposed to be 3 comma negative 1. Uh, I will probably edit the video slightly to, to make a note of that. Anyway, um, the question is, is 3 comma negative 1 a solution to the system? Well, if we plug that into the second equation, x equals 3 uh, and y equals negative 1, we'll have 3 minus a negative 1. That becomes 4, and it does check out for that equation. So great, we're halfway there. Let's see if it works for the other equation. I will let y equal negative 1, and I will allow x to equal a positive 3. And I just want to see if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Well, you see the left-hand side here is negative 1, but the right-hand side, when I do the math here, is 7. And that's not the same. That doesn't work out. That's a, that's a big, bad thing. So... We could see that it doesn't work for the first equation, but it does work for the it does work for the second. But unfortunately, because it fails for the first, it's it's not a uh, solution to the system. All right. In the next video, we'll go ahead and explore special kinds of systems.